This is a very important video for me, not only because it's taken me about two weeks to gear up to finally having the time to make it, but because my channel has finally had its first experience of censorship. That's right. Now I consider my channel to have been uh, based purely around information and analysis. I haven't been making stuff up or casting aspersions over people. I've stuck closely to the facts, I've informed, I've tried to help to share information so that people can can be better informed to make up their own mind about what's going on in Cambridge. And you know that you have struck onto something when one of your videos gets removed. And that's exactly what happened to me last week. So last Friday I posted a video called, Is the Cracker a Conspiracy Theorist? Okay. And um, that was because um, a week before that, I had a post made about me on next door, you know, in that vein, is the Cambridge Cracker a conspiracy theorist? So I made a response video about that. Now in that video, I um, I simply responded to that that point, and I broke down the um, the question, and uh, I answered that question um, in as most of in as much of a comprehensive way as I could, and I also. Uh, went on to uh, tie in a bunch of um, facts which have been going on in Cambridge amongst county council councillors and cam cycle. I pointed out that Neil Shaler had consistently voted to push this thing through. I pointed out that Alex Beckett had told three pretty large falsehoods in the council chambers. I also pointed out that Roxanne Dubow is the executive of CamCycle and has been involved in this thing since at least 2015 when the city deal was originally being written. I also went on to say, to point out that Cambridge City Council and Cambridge County Council are members of the UK 100, which are a group of councils who are committed to achieving net zero by 2050 or 2030. Um, I also went on to point out that the the, um, the World Economic Forum has, has a thing called Agenda 2030, which they have signed a deal with the United Nations to accelerate. Um, and uh, I basically I linked all of those things together, ask, asking, do, do, does pointing out all of those things make me a conspiracy theorist? Now, all of those things are facts. All of those things are true. I didn't make any of that up. You can re research about all of those things yourself. You can research C40 cities. You can research UK100. You can research the WEF. You can research all of these things. It's public information. I'm not making it up. Um, now... Within about 12 hours, I got this message from YouTube. YouTube removed your content. I was like, oh, what? Hi, Cambridge Cracker. Our team has reviewed your content, and unfortunately, we think it violates our medical misinformation policy. We've removed the following content. Is Cambridge Cracker a conspiracy theorist? We know that this might be disappointing, but it is important for us that YouTube is a safe place for all. Blah, 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 blah. How your content violated the policy. YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from the World Health Organization. Right? But the video wasn't anything about that. It literally was nothing about that. It didn't even mention COVID-19 or vaccinations or any medical information whatsoever. So how could I possibly have violated that? So now I'm thinking that's very, very strange. You know? So I launched an appeal... I lodge an appeal with YouTube because I'm thinking this is probably an algorithm overacting and it's a, it's a mistake by the algorithm. So I responded with an, with an appeal that said basically this. <clears throat> the reason cited for removing the video is medical misinformation, but this video has nothing to do with COVID, the pandemic, vaccines or any medical information whatsoever. I think this must be a mistake by the algorithm and this removal should be reviewed and the video re-released. Thank you. So that was the appeal that I sent. Um... Because, you know, sometimes this, this YouTube algorithm it, uh, it might automatically apply to something. They'll take it down and wait for you to appeal and then they'll put it back up again. You know, um, just because it's sort of e easier that way to manage. But then 48 hours after that, I receive the response from YouTube. Cracker, uh, we have reached a decision on your appeal. We've reviewed your content carefully and have confirmed that it violates our medical misinformation policy. So what the hell is that all about? So now I'm in an interesting situation because 
somebody, I think, somebody has actually flagged the video up. And I've I've showed the video to other people and they you know, and I've watched the video back lots of times. There is nothing in it which could possibly violate medical misinformation policy. It must have been flagged up by somebody. Some person has actually um reported the video and it was taken down on some other grounds which they haven't actually told me the truth about. So I didn't let it get me down, obviously, because I just wanted to think about it for a bit. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So I have to think about a way to get this thing put back up, because I'm not going to just be silenced by YouTube or anybody. I have a right to say these things, and this is a democracy which is supposed to have a free press, and I'm supposed to be able to share information so that you, the viewer, and the general public can make up your own mind properly. That's, that is a very important ingredient of democracy. You can't be have truths hidden and you can't be lied to otherwise you're not going to be able to know what's going on so you're not going to be able to vote properly or make your decisions properly so thought about it for a little bit and in my mind there's three possibilities it's either like I said it's either the algorithm gone wrong so it's automatic um, or somebody either in YouTube or elsewhere doesn't want me talking about the World Economic Forum um, or somebody in Cambridge doesn't want me talking about the Lib Dem and Labour uh, coalition or the cam cycle operatives who are uh, operating in Cambridge to help to push this thing through. Those are the three options in my mind. <clears throat> so I put it back up. To test this uh, theory, I put it back up on YouTube using a different channel. I have a, an old personal channel which is for you know personal uh, videos from a long time ago I decided I'll just put this video up on here and leave it just to see if there is some kind of algorithm automatically applying to this thing and you can see that this has actually been up here now for six days nobody's really seen it because nobody looks at this channel but the fact that that's been sitting there for six days perfectly happily shows me that it hasn't been automatically scanned by a bot or an algorithm and flagged up so now I think somebody, a person, has flagged this up, and that is either somebody high up in YouTube world or WEF world, or it's somebody in Cambridge. Now, there are so many videos on YouTube which have got tens of thousands of views, all talking about the WEF and uh, Agenda 2030 and UK 100 and uh, C40 cities and all that stuff, that I just think it can't be somebody in the bigger spectrum, the higher spectrum, who doesn't want me to talk about it, because there are so many other videos which go into so much more detail about it. I only mention it for like a brief few seconds. So I think somebody in Cambridge has actually flagged my video and, tried, and had it taken down. Now, if you look at the content of the video that I made, it would be really easy to understand why somebody in Cambridge doesn't want that being viewed. <laughs> Well, I sh like I said, I showed this video to some other people, and I I, uh, I showed it to a, um, you could call him an associate, a professional associate who I've met through this CRG thing and through this uh, congestion charge thing. He's like um, he's like an internet expert, some technological expert in the internet thingy, and that is the official job title as well. That's as far as I can go go into describing it. He's some some internet um, some internet expert guy who understands about algorithms and surveillance and things I sent the video to him and he I just asked I wanted to ask what his point of view was if there was anything in it that he reckoned might have been flagged up by the algorithm and here's his response hang on so this chap says um, I reviewed your video and script and would lay money on it being withdrawn based on a submitted complaint Given the single use of the WEF, it can't be that. So I'm guessing that this John T has submitted a complaint on the basis that your rhetoric is attacking him and that YouTube choose the closest reason that they can use. I am guessing, but perhaps GDCP stops YouTube telling you that the complaint is personal. The way to test my theory is to send John T your YouTube link from an anonymous email account and watch what happens. My guess is that it will be taken down again, revealing at that point that it is in indeed John T. So that's, uh, yeah, I thought that was a very good idea, and I was thinking something similar along the same lines. So I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to do it quite that way. I'm going to go one step further. So what I actually want to do is I'm going to re-release the, the video exactly as it was, unchanged, 
the one that was removed, I'm going to put it up again on the Cambridge Cracker channel. But I'm not going to put it up yet. I'm going to put it up next week. And I'm going to tell everybody that this video is going to go up next week. And I want everybody who's subscribed to this channel and interested in my work to, to remember and pay attention. Next Sunday at 7, I think. Sunday at 7, I'm going to release the video that someone in Cambridge didn't want you to see. Or that I suspect somebody in Cambridge didn't want you to see. But what we know for certain is that the video was removed for spurious grounds. And the reason that they gave was actually not the real reason. So this is obviously... I've been sidetracked by this strange turn of events. I wasn't expecting to be censored here. And uh, this isn't actually what I want to be doing with my channel. But this is journalism. I have to tell you what's been going on. And I'm here to tell you what's going on in Cambridge with particular regard to the congestion charge. If it is the case that someone in Cambridge is taking down videos which expose the truth of the background of this congestion charge thing, then that is a really, really bad sign, everybody. And that is important, and we should all be aware. That is something which I can tell you now for an absolute irrefutable fact. We are living in a world of censorship. We are living in a world where when you when you crack on the, the truth which underlies these big corporatic sort of um, political rigged systems that we have got going on here in Cambridge, when they're trying to push something through completely outside of all democratic principles, and then they try to actually cancel and d delete videos which expose the truth. What does that tell you about what's going on in Cambridge? Right? So this is a advert, this is an advertisement, and this is a message. We all, the audience of Cambridge, this Cambridge Cracker channel, I want you all to pay attention. Right? I'll remind you again, closer to the time, next Sunday, I'm going to release the video that was taken down last week. And I want to tell you when it's going to go out so that you can watch it, because it might get taken down again, you see. If I put it out at 7 o'clock, and by 9 or 10 or 11 or 12, it's been removed, we'll all know why. All right? But it, the fact is, is that it shouldn't be removed because there's nothing in there which is not true. It's not misinformation. It's the truth. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's the truth. It's honest reporting about facts and evidence which I have found. That is the essence of journalism. And so now the story goes deeper and it takes a strange, slightly sinister turn. My reporting has now got gained such traction and has turned such heads and people are actually looking at what I'm doing and they're being razzled by it and they're being uh, threatened by it and they don't like it. And because they can't combat it in a truthful way, they can't take it on in the public realm, they tried to delete it and cover it up. That's what's happening here in Cambridge, I think. And we're going to wait until next Sunday. I'm going to put the video up again exactly as it was so you can all see it for yourselves and you can make your own judgment about whether or not it's medical misinformation. And if it gets taken down, we'll know then somebody in Cambridge is trying to censor the Cambridge Cracker. And that is a crime against me because I have a right to speak and tell the truth. And it is a crime against you because you have a right to know what is going on in your city. There. That's why this is such an important video. And that's why I've been thinking about this long and hard for the last week or two. And that's what's going to happen. So put it in your calendars, folks. Next Sunday at 7 o'clock, I'm going to re-upload the video, unchanged, unedited, so that you can see it and make up your own mind. And the reason why I did it like this is because I want you, whoever you are who took the video down, to know that what you did is wrong, and I saw you doing it. Just because you think that you silenced me in this instance, I will not be silenced. Okay? And there are other platforms which you won't be able to, attack, uh, uh, won't be able to attack me on, other than YouTube. So the more you try to take me down, the more you're going to expose yourself for what you really are. Right? I'm not going to give up that easily. You think that you can just delete one of my videos and I'll just go away meekly? Think again. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs>